All right, folks, I know I'm two days late on this. Yesterday we had to take the dog to the vet, so I didn't have time. So two days ago was the 95th Oscars. And I'm not going to do an Oscars reaction. Instead, I'm going to do my own Oscars. So these are my attempts at trying to be objective on what is the best of categories now i do some of this i do this every year on my letterbox you can go to the description to find those i make the i make these lists every year but i'm now doing this on video but i'm going to remain objective as i can i do similar categories as the oscars and i take some out i take some of the categories out and i make a few of my own now there's a lot i think there's about 30 so i'm going to do half today and then the back half tomorrow, hopefully. Fingers crossed. All right. And I don't want this video to go too long because I don't want to waste your time. So I'm kind of going to go through it a little fast. Now, the way I do it is I have, you know, the five nominees, sometimes ten, depending on the category. If I really like the category, I do more noms. And I'm going to start from the bottom as, like, it's ranked. So the bottom is the you know fifth best or tenth best four third two ones and then the first is what i think is the best so i'm going to do that i'm going to start from the bottom for each one okay so my first category which is not in the oscars is best opening credits i love a good opening credits so i feel like it's not talked about enough so i want to give some uh attention to it at least try i know these get like 10 views every day every video gets 10 views so it's really not doing anything but I, i'm gonna pretend it does okay opening credits number five crimes of the future four hustle three halloween ends you know with the pumpkins two irma vep which is animated and jackass forever is number one if you've seen it you know why it's number one <laughs> okay and that might be my Godzilla fanboy showing. All right, next one is best opening scene. The I call I consider it an opening scene a scene that happens before the credits or at least the title credit, just so everybody knows. All right, number five, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Number four, The Wonder. Number three, Jurassic World Dominion: The Extended Cut. For some reason, they didn't put. This in the theatrical, the one where it actually shows dinosaurs being dinosaurs X amount of years ago. And then it transitions into the mayhem that's causing in the present day with the Jurassic World. And the movie sucks, I know, but it's a decent opening scene instead of the one they did with the theater, which is some stupid news story. Okay, and then number two, Halloween ends. I'm not going to spoil it. And number one, Athena. Pretty cool 11 minute opening shot pretty sure they didn't do any hidden cuts too <clears throat> sam mendez take note okay and here's some more that i'm I, I i do for me okay i'm a big action guy i grew up on action movie so i have a best action sequences category number five the movie sucks but decent f action the woman king and number four top gun maverick just because they did a lot of that stuff for real Three, Ambulance, a lot of explosions and crashes, I'm all about it. Two, Violent Night, Santa Fights People, by the guys that did John Wick, the same studio and stuff. Number one, Bullet Train, same thing. I think it's the director of uh, the first, 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 first John Wick co-director. All right. And then sometimes these are the same thing. So still in the action category, it's fight choreography. Number five, The Batman, four, Day Shift. Three, The Woman King. Two, Violent Night. Number one, Bullet Train. All right, so here we get to some of the Oscar categories. Best visual effects. Five, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Four, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. Number three, Moonfall. Number two, Jurassic World Dominion. Number one, Avatar, The Way of Water, which I think got the Oscar. So we are lined up with that one. And the only movie I liked of these was Black Panther. So remember, I'm trying to be objective here. Unlike the Oscars. Okay, best film editing, another category. Number 10, Barbarian. 9, Bullet Train. 8, Bardo, False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths, or whatever it's called. Number 7, The Banshees of Inisherin. 
Number six, All Quiet on the Western Front. Number five, Pearl. Four, Nope. Three, Athena. Or Athena, as they pronounce it. Number two, Hustle. Number one, The Batman. Okay. Best Costume Design. Number five, 3,000 Years of Longing. Number four, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Number three, The Northman. Two, Elvis. Number one, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I know you're saying, that's a TV show. I consider a miniseries directed by one person a long movie that they just couldn't release in theaters, and now there's a space, a venue for them. So there's going to be a couple more of those. Like I said, Irma Vep in the opening credits was a miniseries, but same director, so I'm considering it a movie. Okay, best makeup and hairstyling. Number five, Day Shift. Day Shift. It's like vampires and stuff. Number four, 3,000 Years of Longing. Three, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Two, Elvis. Number one, The Batman, which should have won at the Oscars. All right, best cinematophery. We got number 10, The Banshees of Sharon. We got 10 this time because this is a category I really like. Excuse me. Nine, The Fablemans. Eight, Bones and All. Seven, Top Gun, Maverick. Six, Empire of Light. Five, Babylon. Number four, Bardo. Number three, Athena. Excuse me. Number two, All Quiet on the Western Front. Number one, The Batman. Best Production Design. Number five, The Northman. Four, Babylon. Three, Elvis. Two, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Number one, Mad God. All right. Best Sound Mixing. Doctor Strange in the Universe, number four, Moonfall, number three, Avatar, The Way of Water, number two, Jurassic World Dominion, number one, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Love, hate Star Wars, but love the sound effects and the look of them. Look of the world and everything. Okay, best sound editing, five, 3,000 years of longing. So for these, I got best sound editing and, um, oh, I skipped one. Did I do best sound mixing? Yeah. I just showed this before, it, but... Um, I distinguish these a little differently than the Oscars used to. Now it's one category, but they used to have both these categories. Now for sound mixing, the way I like to define it for my own Oscars is mixing of sound effects. So literally the mixing of sound to get new sounds. And then for best sound editing, it's just the way it plays in the theater. How it's surround sound and whatever and all that stuff. And the Or like the way sound is experience through the perspective of the characters and stuff like that all right so best sound editing so i had to see these best sound editing i only put things that i saw in theaters because that's the best way to see a movie and the best way to experience the sound okay so five three thousand years of longing for the woman king three beast number two nope number one top gun maverick all right best original score we got 10 because i love music Number 10, Pearl. 9, Pinocchio. 8, Babylon. 7, The Banshees of Anna Sharon. 6, Empire of Light. 5, Nope. 4, Athena. 3, Smile. Terrible movie, but great effective score. 2, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. This should have won the Oscar more than it did in the first time. So it won best score. The first Black Panther won the best score, which is not that good. But the second score is amazing. And number 1, The Northman. <laughs> I'm dying. All right, and so the next one is Best Fake Movie, a.k.a. Documentary. I saw two documentaries this past year. So I'm only going to do one winner, and that was Fire of Love. The other documentary I saw was The Redeem Team on Netflix about the Olympics, basketball, NBA, the ass, you know, whatever, which was okay. Best Foreign Flick 5, Vortex, for The Kingdom Exodus. That's a miniseries that I consider a movie since it's the same writer-director. Three, Bardo. Two, All Quiet on the Western Front. Number one, Athena. Best animated film. I saw five. Didn't like two of them. I don't think they even deserve to be objectively seen as the best. So I did it three. So three is Mad God. Two is Apollo Ten and a Half. Number one is Pinocchio. Best adapted screenplay. Ten, The Northman. It's based on the legend of um, Hamlet, which is also inspired which inspired Hamlet by Shakespeare. Number nine, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Eight, Bones and All. Seven, All Quiet on the Western Front. Six, Bullet Train. Five, Irma Vep. Number four, The Whale. Number three, 3,000 Years of Longing. Two, Pinocchio. Number one, The Batman. You're seeing a trend here, I know. I hate to say that a superhero movie is doing this well, but it was so good. Okay, Best Original Screenplay. Ten again. I love writing, so 
10, I came by. 9, Duel. 8, Pearl. 7, The Kingdom Exodus. Number 6, Tar. 5, Bardo. 4, Athena. 3, Nope. 2, The Banshees of Anna Sharon. Number 1, Triangle of Sadness. Alright, so now we got a couple... Oh, you know what? I guess we can go through the whole thing instead of doing it tomorrow. I'm moving to prove this pretty fast than I thought. Alright, so we got more categories I made up. Best Voice Acting. Number 5, Peter Sohn for Lightyear. He played the cat, Sox. 4, H. John Benjamin for the Bob's Burgers movies. He's Bob. Kristen Shaw, number 3 for the Bob's Burgers. She's Louise. 2, David Bradley for Pinocchio. He's Geppetto. Number 1, Jenny Slate for Marcel Michelle with shoes on. She's Marcel. Okay, Best Ensemble Performance. So I would say when you have four or more really good performances... It considers an ensemble. You know, if movie with three characters, I don't consider that an ensemble. It's got to be more than three. Personal definition. All right, five, The Kingdom Exodus. Number four, Triangle of Sadness. Number three, Athena. Two, The Batman. Number one, The Woman King, a.k.a. Queen. <laughs> Should have said that earlier. Okay, best breakthrough performance. How I define this is not somebody's technically, not their first movie, but their f first um like they're in a supporting role or a main role and they did it for the first time and they do really well. So they could have like a minor part in another movie, but then they get a supporting or a main and they do amazing. That's what I call breakthrough. Not just, you know, they just started getting noticed even though they've done leads or supporting or it's their first movie ever. doesn't matter. It's so long as it's in the lead or the supporting for the first time and they knock it out of the park. Okay, so five banks for PETA and Armageddon time. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, dude. He was uh, the little, the main kid. Number four, Laura Galan. It's Spanish. I don't know if I'm saying that right. In Piggy. Three, Dario Agento and Vortex, who's also a director of lots of Italian horror films, in case you guys aren't you know, uh, familiar with him. So it's cool that a director put it, got into uh, the main role of a movie. It doesn't really happen, and he's really old. And I think he's only had, like, cameos and stuff. Number two, Anna Cobb, and we're all going to the World's Fair. I think she's going to blow up. Um, number one, Sami Sramain in Athena. I'm butchering that pronunciation, I'm sure. Okay, best supporting actress. So we're going to, I love acting, so we're going to do 10 in each of these categories. Number 10, Tang Wei in Decision to Leave. Number nine, Viola Davis in The Woman King. Mia Goth in X as the old lady. She's the old lady in X. I don't know if you know that. Sheila Atim in The Woman King. Six, Nina Haas in Tar. Five, Angela Bassett or Bassett. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not racist. In Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm just stupid and white. Number three, Carrie Condon in The Banshees of Anna Sharon. Number three, Dolly DeLeon in Triangle of Sadness. Number two, Rachel Sennett or Sennott. I don't know. In Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Number one, Hong Chao in The Whale. She deserved the Oscar the other night. All right, supporting actor, Paul Dano in The Fablemans. Ridiculous that Judd Hirsch got nominated for The Fablemans when he's in it for five minutes, and Paul Dano doesn't get nominated. Number nine, Sean Harris in The Stranger. Number eight, Mel Gibson in Father Stew. Seven, whew, Jacques Bjerg in Triangle of Sadness. Six, Sammy Slamane in Athena. So he got double dipped. Number five, Rory Kinnear in Men. He plays almost all the men characters in that movie, which is kind of cool, and he did great. It's as much as that movie was terrible. Number three, number four, Justin Long in Barbarian. Number three, Colin Farrell in The Batman. Number two, Mark Rylance in Bones and All. Number one, Paul Dano in The Batman. All right. Best Leading Actress. Number 10, Margot Robbie in Babylon. Nine, Caitlin Deaver in Rosalind. Or Rosalind. Eight, Thuzo Mbed Mbedu in The Woman King. Letitia Wright in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Six, Olivia Coleman in Empire of Light. Five, Kate Blanchett in Tar. Four, Taylor Russell in Bones and All. Three, Mia Goth in Pearl. Two, Aubrey Plaza for Emily the Criminal. And Grace Kaufman in The Sky is Everywhere. There we go, spelling error. Okay, best leading actor. Robert Pattinson for The Batman. Idris Elba for Beast. Eight, Adam Sandler in Hustle. Seven, Dali Bansala in Athena. Six, Ethan Hawke in Raymond and Ray. 
Five, Brad Pitt and Bullet Train. Four, Will Smith and Emancipation. All this member being objective here. Three, Colin Farrell and the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Two, Alexander Skarsgård and the Northman. And number one, Brendan Fraser and the Whale. Probably the only well-deserved, most-deserved award from the Oscars this past Sunday. All right, and then I have a category called, category called Best Scene. It's only in alphabetical order. There's ten of them, and it's a pretty stupid list because it only goes by what I remember. I can't really remember every scene from every movie I saw in the past year, but I did my best. All right. Even though it's not ranked, I'm still going to go from 10 to 1. The Yachts Are Rockin', Triangle of Sadness. 9, Meeting the Dijin in 3,000 Years of Longing. The Mound Dweller in The Northman. The Star Lasso Experience in Nope. It probably should be in the top. Whatever. 6, Birthing Men. Um, Batman, number 5, Batman Interrogates the Riddler. In the Batman, obviously. Four, when Batman chases in the Batmobile, the Penguin. Of course, from the Batman. The uh, Number three, conversation with Cortez on a pile of corpses in Bardo. Two, Hello College in Babylon. It's a montage of Margot Robbie's first, her character's first stint in a sound, right? And they just keep messing up. It's pretty, hate that movie, but that was a great scene. Number one, the opening from Athena. Remember, it's not ranked. It's alphabetical. All right, and then I got some stupid category here called Best Streaming Service Original. Number five, The Kingdom Exodus, which is on Mubi. Four, Pinocchio on Netflix. Three, Bardo, Netflix. Two, All Quiet on the Western Front on Netflix. Number one, Athena on Netflix. And then I got Best Debut Film, their first feature-length film. I got three, actually, of these. So Eric Appel for Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Two, Joseph and Vanessa Winter for Deadstream. And number one, John Patton Ford for Emily the Criminal. All right, for Best Director, got ten, because I love directing. That's what I want to do and try to do like, on occasion. Number ten, George Miller for 3,000 Years of Longing. Nine, Guillermo del Toro and Mark Gustafson for Pinocchio. Eight, Todd Field for Tor. Seven, Ruben Ostlund for Triangle of Sadness. Number six, Edward Berger for All Quiet on the Western Front. Number five, Ty West for Pearl. Four, Jordan Peele for Nope. Three, Roman or Romain Gavras for Athena. Number two, Alejandro González Irolito for Bardo. Number one, Matt Reeves for The Batman. All right, and best picture, number 10. These are the best films. My objective take on the top 10 best films of 2022 number 10 pearl it's got no wins and six nominations by me we got nine pinocchio got one win and seven nominations eight tar zero wins five nominations seven nope that's nope on any awards but seven nominations bardo number six zero wins eight nominations Five, All Quiet on the Western Front, zero wins, seven nominations. Four, Athena, four wins out of 13 nominations. Three, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, zero wins, seven nominations. Now, I know how could that be over Athena with, you know, no awards and twice as, half as many nominations. To me, what really boils down to the best films, writing, acting, and directing. All the other technical stuff is, you know, great. But what really counts is the directing, acting, and screenplay, in my opinion. And then two, Triangle of Sadness is the number two film of the year, I'd say. Number one, uh, it's got one win out of seven nominations. And you guessed it, I think the best film of the year is The Batman. And I hate that it's a superhero movie. But like I said, it's so good. The Batman had seven wins out of 13 nominations. Now, I didn't get a chance to see everything I wanted this past year. So on Letterboxd, I always update these lists. No matter what the year is, when I rewatch or watch something for the first time, I update it if need be. Now, this is a video. I can't. So just follow me on Letterboxd. And if you ever want to check up on a year and see if there's been any updates, just go ahead and check it. But thanks for watching something just as pointless as the Oscars. But I think it's better because it's me. Why are there so many movies?